How's it going guys? American Maverick here. Today we're going to be doing another reaction video and hopefully this time the quality of my video is going to be a little bit better. You're probably noticing two very important things. First one, behind me, finally got that green screen so you don't have to stare at my messy room. Second one, I actually have my microphone now. I think I was able to get my phone to work before I wasn't able to get videos onto my computer for editing, but I think I finally got that fixed. If you're watching this video, that means I got it fixed. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to be reacting today. Um, oh, also, I forgot more introduction. So I am a history major at my university right now. I'm as well a Army National Guardsman. Figure I'd get that out of there. Hence the reason I'm watching this type of video. Today, we're going to be watching How Did These Warriors Continue to Fight When Shot? Now, if, I if I'm correct, I think this video is about the Filipino-American War. And this was really interesting to me because, like you may not know, I've said it in my other videos, I spent two years living in the Philippines. I absolutely love the Philippines. I love Filipino people. I was actually able to learn a couple of their languages while I was there. And so anything with this is really interesting to me. Um, especially the Filipino-American War, because not a lot of people, especially not a lot of Americans, know about it. And so hopefully we can all learn a little bit about this conflict that often goes unnoticed. So let's hop right into it. How did these warriors continue to fight when shot? The Juramentados, the suicidal warriors of the southern Philippines, 1899 to 1913. The Filipino-American War that lasted from 1899 to 1902 was an insurrection by Philippine nationalists against their recent occupation by American forces. During the fighting, the American Army... Now, real quick, that is one thing that's still hotly debated, whether to call this an insurrection or a revolution. Um, and for me personally, I'd call it more a revolution because they had their own government that they had proclaimed um, prior to American occupation. And so it doesn't really matter really what you call it, but I would call it more a revolution than an insurrection. Me who had taken the islands from the Spanish the previous year found themselves in a bitter guerrilla war with the nationalist rebels. But worse was to come when they came up against the hostile Moro tribesmen in the south of the country. For their warriors called juramentados, which meant oath takers in Spanish, were devout fanatics. These fearless warriors carried a distinct shaped dagger called a Chris into battle with a sharp, wavy edge blade. Actually, sorry I'm pausing this so much. I'm going to pause a lot. I actually um, had one of these forged um, by hand while I was there. And I, I, I don't have it right now because I had to leave it in the Philippines. Um, when I left, I left in a hurry because of COVID. But I left it with a couple of friends there. And hopefully uh, they'll be able to drop it off to me when they're back here um, in America soon which at close quarters could be used to devastating effect. Alongside this, they also armed themselves with Kampilan swords, spears, arrows, bayonets, and muskets. In battle, the tribesmen wore robes and turbans and seemed to be unstoppable to the Americans at first. At the time, the U.S. Army's standard sidearm was the Colt M1892 38 caliber six-shot revolver, which appeared to have little effect on these charging berserkers. Sometimes it would take up to a full cylinder of six shots from one of these revolvers to take down one of these warriors. But before they did, they would already be close enough to kill at least several members of the U.S. patrol they were ambushing. Before battle, the Moro tribesmen ritually bound their bodies in tight strips of cloth. This had the effect of slowing down blood loss when wounded in battle, wow. allowing them to kill as many of the enemy before they finally died of their injuries. That is, that, that is impressive. That level of dedication, that's crazy. But what I was going to say is actually, um, you might think looking at how they were using muskets and these old hand-to-hand -hand weapons, you might discredit them a little bit. But you have to remember, uh, when you're fighting in the jungle, and again, I hike through the mountains every single day. Um, when you're actually in that type of environment, if you can get up close, weapons like that would just be absolutely devastating to Americans. And especially saying six shots uh, with that revolver before they go down, you can close a lot of distance in the time frame it takes somebody to fire, even a trained soldier, six shots. For the Juramentados saw their attack on the enemy as being a sacred duty and expected it to end in their own deaths, seeing it as their road to paradise and salvation. They combined this with recreational drugs to inhibit this sensation of pain. Okay. This altered their state of consciousness, which turned them into an almost unstoppable frenzy. Right, yeah, you see in the news sometimes uh, these stories of these people who are hyped up on drugs, 
and um, they get shot six, seven times, and they just keep going. Um, and I guess that's what they were doing there. It just it does something to your mind, your body, where you just I don't know if you don't notice it or if you don't care that you're getting shot, but that is that is absolutely insane. This, combined with the inadequate stopping power of the U.S. Army's 38 revolver, resulted in terrifying experiences in combat. One account told of Moro tribesmen surging directly through barbed wire, even as it ripped through their flesh and they were riddled with bullets. When they fell, they had glittering eyeballs and bared black teeth. Another was when a Marine emptied his 38 revolver into a tribesman charging towards him, to no effect. He was only saved at the last second when a fellow Marine took down the warrior with a rifle. It was only the Americans' Krag rifles and Winchester 1897 trench shotguns that had the adequate stopping power against the Moro warriors. The Juramentados were all but wiped out in 1913 when a large American force led by General Pershing attacked the final stronghold of the Moro. That the same General Pershing who led the Americans during World War I? I think so. Because I know he did serve in the Filipino-American War. I didn't know he was in that large of a leadership role, though, at that time. A large fortified position at the top of Mount Bagsak in the Philippine volcanic island of Yolo, Sulu. The American forces made heavy use of their pump-action shotguns in the battle in order to stop the charging Juramentados. After a bloody battle that lasted several days, the Americans were victorious. All 500 warriors involved were killed as the Americans didn't take any prisoners and left any enemy wounded to die unattended on the battlefield. The American forces lost just 14 men with another 24 wounded. Wow. General Pershing afterwards wrote to his wife saying, the fighting was the fiercest I have ever seen. They are absolutely fearless. And once committed to combat, they count death as a mere incident. The whole experience so unnerved the U.S. military that after the insurrection, they decided to replace their revolvers with a much larger caliber weapon, and that was the legendary 45 heavy caliber Colt M1911 semi-automatic pistol. That might be my favorite pistol right there. A weapon that was said to be powerful enough to stop a horse and prove so reliable and effective that it stayed in frontline service for 75 years with the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps. It's still used today by the U.S. Special Forces as they value its incredible stopping power and long-range accuracy. All right, I think that's the end of the video. It looks like that's it. All right, so let's talk about this quickly um, before wrapping things up. Uh, I enjoyed that a lot. I, I love learning. Like I said, I, I absolutely love the Philippines. I loved... Uh, my time there, definitely want to go back sometime. Um, and you have to tip your hat to these Filipino warriors. I mean, just imagine that, going in, fighting with swords and with muskets against a modern army, um, at that time, modern army that outnumbered you. Um, and so you got to give them credit for their absolute bravery in that. Uh, but just imagine, and again, if you've ever been in a tropical kind of environment like I have, and you've ever hiked through them, uh, you've ever tried to traverse them, uh, you know it is so difficult. Um, and so I can't imagine what it was like on both sides there. Um, I didn't know General Pershing um, was that involved in the war. Like I said, I knew he had uh, served in it, uh, but I thought he was more on the sidelines. So that's pretty interesting to learn about. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments about this conflict. And definitely, if you want to, check out some of my other videos. I do want to react to more Filipino content just because I can relate to that a little bit more because of my experiences living there. Um, if there are any Filipinos watching this, you guys are awesome. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Consider liking or subscribing, and we'll see you guys next time.